Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another China adventure. Today we're in a relatively small city, a place you've surely never heard of, called Nong'an. We're in the northeastern province of Jilin, and we're starting out in one of the main town squares. As you can see, not a lot of action. You've got some people here that set up shop and rent out these uh, little cars for kids to ride, and uh, there's a couple of stragglers out there having a good time, but... <laughs> Actually, those aren't kids. That's a couple, probably in their 20s. So yeah, pretty empty square here today, but I'm happy to say the weather is beautiful. So that's definitely a plus. And I wanna just show you around and um, kind of see what small city life or small town life is like up here in Nongan. The question I pose to you guys is what car would you choose? You know, it's kind of funny how time passes you by. It just felt like it wasn't that long ago where it was so cold every day. I couldn't wait for the weather to warm up. And now here I am, I find myself looking for shade from the summer heat. Now here's the local bank, the Jilin Nong An Rural Commercial Bank. Down there, it looks like quite a bit going on. Actually, I wanted to walk down this road, but with this wall going all the way down, I changed my mind, so I'm gonna take a detour and go a different way. Well, here's something you might find interesting. Dog meat restaurant. Now here's something that just kind of caught me by surprise. We've got the Nong An Mosque. So I'm guessing the local Muslim community is probably the Hui ethnic minority. This is kind of a cool name for a road. Gu Chengjie means like ancient to ancient city or ancient town avenue it doesn't look very ancient but it is a cool name but actually across the street there's a hot pot restaurant with sort of an ancient kind of look now i will say i'm off to a boring ass start in this trip i know that guys stick with me i promise you there's some good stuff on the way i have to say once a skateboarder always a skateboarder because i'm walking down the street and all I can do is think how much fun this place would be. I don't skate like I used to. I mean, every now and again, every every now and again, I'll skate a little bit, but you know, just cruising down the street, kind of slightly downhill. You can just keep going down on this top platform, or you could do, you know, maybe kick flip, kick flip these stairs, and then you've got a little bank down into the street. I made a huge loop around this construction site where they're doing all this road work, and I can get a peek in, and you can kind of see what they're working on. You can see, it's redoing the entire road, but that's a pretty long area. I just did a detour, and this is nice because there's a lot of shade, it's quiet, and you can kind of see the, the quieter side of town. It's not all the flashy stuff and, you know, town squares and shopping malls that you might see. This is just a quiet side street. And I've told you all before how everybody here in China pretty much, well, at least in the cities, live in gated communities. And here's one. I mean, you could get through this one, but there should be a security guard over here somewhere. He's probably in this little room over here, and there's, of course, cameras everywhere. Here's a restaurant that's gone under, but if it was open, I might stop in. If you look at the white characters there below the big red ones, it says, Di Dao Sichuan Cai. That means like authentic Sichuan cuisine. And as you know, Sichuan cuisine is amazing. But unfortunately, they have gone under, probably due to COVID, that killed a lot of businesses. Well, apparently we've got a Conor McGregor fan here. Uh, this is what I saw on the map, and this is what I was looking for, the Fajir Park. Fajir Gongyuar. And it looks like there's a river in here, so, you know, you can never go wrong getting on the river walk, just walking beside the river, hearing the water flow. For people who live in Nong'an, this looks like a good place to be. Nice running path there, and then just a good place to hang out, you know, it's very peaceful, it's a nice looking park. Got statues, and it's got a cool design too. It's kind of unique. Yeah, you see what I'm saying guys? You just can't go wrong with this. Beautiful, sunny day, blue sky. It's always peaceful, good time to just walk. Especially today, there's so few people out. But yeah, this is a nice park, I've gotta say. I definitely like it. There's this nice old guy on the bike, I just asked him about a couple places here in town and uh, he was kinda surprised to see me, but he was very friendly and he told me, 
He gave me the answers to my questions, so I'm gonna take you guys there pretty soon. It's kind of cool to see those lily pads. You know, back home, how everything is so trimmed up and always like, you know, they've always got fresh lawn care, the grass is cut, everything is pruned and trimmed. I'll be honest, for a park, I prefer it like this, just to kind of let it grow. I think it looks more aesthetically pleasing, it looks more natural. You know, for a front yard or something, yeah, I think it looks nice to have, you know, your grass cut and a nice looking lawn, but for a park, I think it looks better to just let it grow like this. It's got more of a, a feeling of being out in nature. Whereas if everything was all nice and trim and neat, you just kind of feel like you're walking on a sidewalk in somebody's front lawn. You know what I mean? It's just a random thought for the day. Now you'll see these ladies here. They've got that kind of sun umbrella. I forgot what that's called. It's pretty hot out here. And you can see they're pretty well covered up. They've got to be hot as hell. But the reason they do that is they don't want to get, they don't want to get a suntan. It's not like they're really worried like about skin cancer and preventing that, which, I mean, that's a plus, you know, to avoid direct sunlight, but they just don't want to get tan. They like to keep their skin as light as possible. So that's why you'll see, especially with women in China, you'll oftentimes see them, you'll, you'll be like, why does she have an umbrella on a sunny day? Well, actually, that's not an umbrella. I'll, I'll write on the screen what those are called. There's a name for them, I forgot, because I don't use them, obviously. But you'll see ladies like on a hot day, just totally covered up, long sleeves, face covered big round hat and it's just to prevent them from getting a suntan because they tan easy and when they get tan it stays you know they keep the color for a pretty long time i'm kind of jealous i wish i could do that because whenever i get a tan it seems like within just a few days it's gone well this is it this is the end of the park we're gonna get up on this road you can see down here you got a guy doing some fishing a couple guys doing some fishing look where i ended up no man's land from my other videos, you know I've told you about pedestrian streets. Buxingjie. This is apparently the pedestrian street in Nong'an City. I wanted to check this area out just because, like I said, there's always plenty of people. It's lively. They're selling their goods. He got down on his luck there. Homeless guy. Um, selling their goods. There's tons of little restaurants. I mean, just these people here. They're selling... They're, they probably have great business right now, selling uh, sausages and other random things. I say this in all my videos, if you go to a city and you don't know what to do, it's always best to stop over at Buxingjie and kind of get your bearings and kind of get a feel for the town. And it's always easy to meet some locals and you can kind of ask them, you know, what they recommend, if there's any good restaurants, if there's anything fun to do in town. It's a great starting point, somebody selling Pets, cats, dogs, rabbit. The rabbit looks dead, unfortunately. Hopefully it's still breathing, but I really don't know. You'll see this a lot. These people selling these little multicolored chiclets. It's kind of sad in a way, because, well, first of all, they've been dyed, you know, different colors, which can be good for them. And you know when people buy these, you know they're not going to last that long. Probably a parent buys it for the kid. The kid slaps the bag against the wall to play with it, and then the bird's dead, you know. But it is sort of interesting to see, although it is slightly depressing. It's this guy selling them here, and it's got another one there. I've had quite a few people greet me and say hello and be very friendly, which is always nice. Nice to feel welcome in an area. So I appreciate that. So you can see more of those chiclets there, all different colors. Yeah, you go to watch, yeah. Uh, so five yuan, so that's less than a dollar for one. Cherries, lychee, grapes. Wow, look at these. Somebody selling turtles over here. Yeah, you got a big one. Yeah, it's a big one. Oh, it's so I thought that street there was the actual walking street. It's not. It's not the pedestrian street. Because, ta-da, this is it. That's just the lead up to it. But to be honest with you, there's a lot more going on on that street than there is the pedestrian street. But over here, you've got all these different food stalls. Over here, you've got these, uh, again, these half-developed, uh, I forgot what they're called, uh, but in Chinese, it's maldan. 
kind of half developed eggs. And this lady, she saw me, she put on her mask. She didn't do that when she saw the locals, but she did it when she saw me. It's just something you gotta get used to here. There are some people that are still afraid of uh, non-Chinese, unfortunately. This is the beginning of the pedestrian street area. Just a bunch of snacks and knickknacks. Oh, I just smelled some stinky tofu. Oh, that stuff kills me. Oh, there it is. I knew I smelled it. This is a chardofu or stinky tofu. And it sure has a stench. Oh, here's, here you can get a closer look at those Malvan. Partially developed embryos. You see a leg on that one and the, the fur, the feathers growing. It's wild. Sausages, some more sausages. Cooked on rocks, that's interesting. So this is technically the pedestrian street. And as you can see, all the action's kind of back that way. But let's just walk through here, see what kind of stores and shops they've got. Urka, Chinese sporting good line, like Antai is another one. They make shoes and sports clothes and all that. Up ahead, you see Chow Dan, fake Michael Jordan shop. A little quaint little walking street. If you saw my recent Shenyang video where I showed you Zhongjie, that's a serious walking street. Huge, nice. But this is, you know, this is a small town version. So in the big cities they've got them and in the small towns they've got them. They're just a little different. But they're always a good place to go and talk to some locals, get a feel for the town, ask any questions that you have. I just intentionally took a wrong turn and I ended up back in this little courtyard. To look off in the distance, there's a pagoda and it looks pretty damn old. So I'm definitely headed that way. So here's a makeshift parking lot or an actual parking lot that has been used excessively. And just imagine if you were this car, you ain't getting out. <laughs> Again, I'm intentionally taking a wrong turn. Don't know where this leads, but let's check it out. Okay, it continues. And from here, we've got to go up. I'll go up a little bit. I don't want to, you know, get right up on somebody's like balcony or something. So if I'm getting, if I'm encroaching on anybody's space, I'll just uh, turn around. But this looks pretty, like fair play. Got some roof access. Some, growing some plants up here. That's kind of cool. I'm going to get out of here though, because I'm kind of close to people's homes and you know, they're not going to see a lot of Westerners out here. <laughs> so I don't want anybody to get spooked or feel uncomfortable. Try to be considerate. But that was pretty cool. Oh, here you go. You got these set up to, uh, to they've got rat poison. Kill off the rats. Now this is one thing I've got to say that I like about China a lot. Or any country with like a long culture or ancient history. You're just walking down the road and just suddenly you see something like this. I can't tell you how cool this feels. In a video, I don't think you can really appreciate it, but when you're just making a turn and then you see this, it's, it really is spectacular. This is just a small town, a small city in China that I would imagine a lot of Chinese people haven't even heard of. And look what they've got. I'll find some history on this and uh, put it on the screen for you guys. Because to be honest, I don't know the history of this, but I will find it and I will share it with you all. Now I've seen some interesting business names in the past, but I've got to say, this drugstore wins the award. The, it's the, it wins the world championship of interesting names, benefiting all drugstore. Well, we're getting near the train station now. And as I've told you before, you'll start seeing a bunch of these little luguat or little like motels or little travelers hotels. These things are super cheap, usually just a few dollars a night, a few dollars US that is. 
even cheap for the locals but westerners or non-chinese absolutely will not be allowed to stay here why well can't really explain why exactly but i can, can explain how we will be refused because they'll say do you have a chinese id card well as a non-chinese do you actually think we're gonna have a chinese id card the answer is no passport will not work visa a visa a chinese visa will not work you must have a chinese id card which you will not have here's another thing that you may not realize but donkey meat is pretty common up well at least here in the northeast of china it says right here a donkey meat restaurant we're right here at the station nongan jan i'm gonna walk walk over there take a closer look at it see what's going on well, i didn't want to make the guy feel uncomfortable by putting his picture on video but there's a little shop over here by the station guy middle-aged guy saw me walking past asked me where i'm from told him where i'm from gave me a big smile super friendly told me to get some water because it's hot so i was like okay how much is a bottle and and he said, I'll just take one. I was like, no, nah, I can't do that. He insisted. So finally, I, I conceded and I, he gave me a free ice cold water. And that was so nice. I mean, this would have been too quiet. So like 33, 35 cents. But just the fact that he offered it for free is so nice. I mean, you do still run into that kind of kindness sometimes. But, you know, you've got to put off friendly vibes too. And, uh, you know, usually with me, when I'm walking past, I'll greet locals. I'll smile at them. I'll ask them if they've had lunch it's a common question in china have you eaten it's a common greeting it's it's guaranteed to get a smile out of the locals if you give off friendly vibes you'll get some back and this guy was so nice i mean what can you say so from the station if you look out this is what you'll see this is nong an station and there's a bus station here too got some kind of what, a water tower or something and then over here you enter the station i don't even think i can enter because i don't have a ticket but we can at least take a look inside you know just take a sneak peek oh here's all the things you're not allowed to take yeah see i can't come in there's security there but this is the station so when you get here over here at the exit like when you arrive at a station, you often you come out and you'll see people standing around. Well, some of the people here to greet people, you know, they're waiting for relatives or friends or business partners, but you'll also have like taxi drivers that are waiting to pick you up. And a lot of times, well, not a lot of times, I always avoid those guys just because I've had a few bad experiences. I always leave the station and there's always like a legitimate taxi area you should go to. You know, there's no reason to get out of, off of a train and come out and be bombarded by 15 guys when there's a, a place to get a legitimate taxi right there you know the taxis are supposed to arrive and wait in line kind of wait their turn you know so I, I never take those guys taxis that's just a piece of advice if you're traveling in china because pretty much any station you arrive at there's going to be like several guys out there waiting saying oh come on where are you going where are you going come on let me take you yeah i always just say no thanks and i go get a legitimate taxi I always think these little kind of buildings, these little one level, like old style buildings look interesting. They're very unique. And you'll still find them a lot, at least up here in the Northeast. Of course, a lot of them have been torn down, but over here by the station, there's this building. It's got a, it's got a bus station here. And it says on the second floor is the uh, delicious food city. So let's see what kind of delicious foods they really have. All right, guys, here we go. Mei Shi Cheng, Delicious Food City. Here comes the big reveal. Behind these doors, you're gonna see a world of amazing foods. That's my prediction. Let's check it out. Huh? Oh no! Now I wasn't having much luck finding anything to eat right around the station, but I found a little shop and they sell what they call lung mian and re mian. Now lung mian, if you've seen my other videos, you know that's a type of noodle, it, it comes from Korea. They're very popular up here. Well, this place sells a hot version, which is apparently a specialty of a local town called Jiltai. So I've never had this one, 
and decided to give it a shot. I mean, this costs like a dollar, dollar twenty U.S. You know, all this is pretty much is it's cold noodles, which are very popular up here, but it's just served hot. And to be honest, I'm not a big fan of the cold noodles, but this one's actually really good.